you know, anytime you use ChatGPT, Bard, or even just the auto-translate on your phone, you're actually using something that all started with one single incredible research paper. Back in 2017, this paper, Attention is All You Need, came out and introduced an architecture called the Transformer. And look, this wasn't just some small step forward, it was a total game changer. It basically threw out the old rulebook for processing language and became the engine that powers almost every single advanced AI model we have today. Okay, so here's how we're going to break this down. First, we'll look at the big problem the Transformer was designed to fix. Then, we'll dive into its secret sauce, this thing called attention. After that, we'll put all the pieces together, check out the incredible results, talk about the good and the bad, and wrap up with what it all means for you and me, as people actually building this stuff. So, let's set the stage. Before the Transformer came along, the world of natural language processing pretty much ran on one thing, recurrent neural networks, or RNNs. Now, to get what was wrong with them, imagine trying to read a book, but you can only look at one word at a time through a tiny straw. Seriously, that's kind of what it was like for an RNN. This word-by-word -word process created a huge, huge bottleneck that was really holding the entire field back. So here's what was happening under the hood. The RNN would process the first word, the, and create this little summary of it. We call that a hidden state. Then it takes that summary, combines it with the next word, cat, and makes a new summary. And it just keeps doing that, one word after another. But see the problem? It's a bit like a game of telephone. By the time you get to the end of a long sentence, the information from the beginning gets all fuzzy and diluted. It just fades away. This is a classic, fundamental problem we call the vanishing gradient. And this whole one word at a time thing created a massive mismatch with the hardware we were using. I mean, think about GPUs. They are absolute beasts at parallel computing. They're built to do thousands, even millions of things all at once. But the software, the RNNs, were forcing them to go one by one by what? It's exactly like having a Ferrari, but you're stuck in rush hour traffic. You've got all this incredible power under the hood, and you just can't use it. All that potential was just going to waste. So when you boil it all down, this sequential bottleneck gave us two giant headaches. Problem number one, you couldn't really parallelize the work, which meant training these models took forever, just painfully slow. And problem number two, that fading memory issue we talked about, it meant the models were just awful at connecting the dots in a long piece of text, you know, linking a word at the beginning of a paragraph to one at the end. We call this long-range dependencies, and not being able to handle them was a huge, huge limitation. Okay, so the authors of this paper came along and asked a really radical question. They said, what if we just stopped? What if we threw out this whole word-by-word -word thing? Instead, what if a model could just look at the entire sentence all at once? That is the big idea. That's the core concept behind attention. And it was the key that finally unlocked the full power of parallel processing for language. All right, check out this sentence. For us as humans, it's super obvious, right? The word it clearly refers to the animal and not the street. But for a machine, this is a textbook long-range dependency problem. The words it and animal are separated by a few other words. Now, an old-school RNN would really have a tough time with this. The memory of the word animal would start to fade as it processed didn't cross the street. By the time it got to it, that original context could be totally gone. And this is precisely the problem that the self-attention mechanism was built to solve. So how does self-attention work? Well, the core idea is actually pretty elegant, and you can think of it as a simple three-part recipe. For every single word in the sentence, the model generates three distinct vectors, a query, a key, and a value. The best analogy is a database lookup. The word it sends out a query that's basically asking, hey, who out there is relevant to me? Then every other word in the sentence holds up its key, which is like a label. Animal says, I'm a noun. Cross says, I'm a verb. The query from it scans all these keys, finds the best match, which is animal, and then pulls that word's value, which is its actual meaning. This creates a direct link, a shortcut, letting it grab context directly from animal, completely ignoring the distance between them. Okay, so now that we've got the main idea of attention down, let's start building the full transformer. We'll see how these attention modules are stacked together and how they fit inside a bigger framework called an encoder-decoder model, which, by the way, is a classic setup for tasks like machine translation. But wait a second, you might be thinking, if the model sees all the words at the same time, doesn't it lose the original order of the sentence? And that is an excellent question. The authors came up with a really clever fix for this called positional encoding. Basically, before anything else happens, the model adds a special little signal, a unique vector, to each word's embedding. 
You can think of this vector as a kind of GPS coordinate that tells the model exactly where each word is in the sequence. This is word one, this is word two, this is word three, and so on. Problem solved. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty of how that attention calculation actually happens. It's a four step dance. Step one, we calculate scores. This is where the query from our word checks out the key of every other word to figure out how relevant they are. Step two, we scale those scores down a bit, which just helps keep the training process stable. Step three, we use a softmax function. All that does is turn those messy scores into a nice clean set of weights that all add up to one. These are our attention weights. And finally, step four, we take those weights and use them to create a weighted sum of all the value vectors. What comes out the other end is a brand new, super-powered representation of our original word, now packed with context from all the other words it decided to pay attention to. But they didn't stop there. The next brilliant move was something called multi-head attention. The idea is, why do this attention calculation just once? Why not do it multiple times, all in parallel? The original paper used eight of these parallel processes, or heads. And the really cool part is that each head learns to focus on a different kind of relationship in the sentence. So you might have one head that gets really good at spotting grammatical links, like subject-verb pairs. Another head might focus on semantic meaning, figuring out that animal and tired are related concepts. It's literally like having a panel of eight different experts, all looking at the same sentence at the same time, each providing their own unique insights. So this new architecture wasn't just a cool idea on a whiteboard. It went out and completely demolished the existing records for machine translation, which was the main testbed for the paper. I mean, the numbers really tell a story here. On a standard benchmark for English to German translation, the big transformer model hit a blue score of 28.4. Now, to put that in perspective, that didn't just edge out the previous best model, it blew past the best ensemble of models. And an ensemble is when you team up multiple models to work together. So a single transformer was outperforming a whole team of the previous generation's best. That's not just an improvement, that's a whole new level. And here's the real kicker. It wasn't just better, it was also faster and cheaper to train. A lot faster. Thanks to that parallel design, they achieved these record-breaking scores while using way less compute. We're talking about training the big model in just three and a half days on eight GPUs. That was a tiny fraction of the training cost for the older, less accurate models. So you're getting better results for less time and money. That's the holy grail. But of course, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? No model is perfect. So let's get real about the pros and cons here and look at the trade-offs that come with this architecture. This table, which is straight from the paper, is really the core of the technical argument. Just focus on two columns here, sequential operations and max path length. For the old RNNs, you can see the path length is O of N. That means the longer the sentence, the more steps information has to travel. But look at self-attention. It's O of 1, constant time. That means, for a transformer, the distance between any two words in a sentence is always just one step. It's a direct connection. That is the secret. That's why it's so good at capturing those long-range relationships that RNNs struggled with. Okay, but now for that trade-off I mentioned. Look at the first column, complexity per layer. For self-attention, it's O of n squared. So what does that mean in plain English? It means that as your sequence gets longer, the computation needed gets way, way bigger really fast. If you double the length of your text, the compute needed quadruples. This makes the original transformer design super expensive for really long sequences. We're talking whole documents or books or even DNA sequences. It's a major bottleneck. And honestly, a ton of the research since this paper came out has been focused on trying to fix this exact problem. So let's wrap this up. If you're an engineer or a practitioner working in this space today, what are the big takeaways? Why does this paper from 2017 still matter so much? Well, here's the bottom line. The core ideas from this paper, things like, hey, we don't actually need recurrence, or the sheer power of self-attention for understanding context, and especially the idea of building models for the parallel hardware we have, these aren't just concepts anymore. They are the fundamental building blocks of pretty much every large-scale AI model out there today. If you want to understand modern AI, you have to understand this paper. It's really like reading the source code, the DNA of the entire field as we know it. So this paper was an absolute revolution. It smashed the sequential bottleneck that was holding back the entire field. But it also created a new one, that O of n squared complexity problem, which leaves us with a really interesting question to think about. What's the next great bottleneck in AI architecture? And more importantly, what will be the next attention is all you need moment that comes along to solve it? 